Hi, I'm Sarah Cook. I'm a recipe writer and food stylist, and I'm here to tell you that bread isn't complicated. In fact, it's just about the most simple and satisfying thing that you can make in your kitchen. Now, Allenson have come up with three really easy to learn dough recipes with just a few quality ingredients and some really set, simple techniques. So you can rise up to the challenge and have homemade bread every day of the week if you want to. <laughs> We've also got loads of flavour twists and shape twists, which means once you've mastered these three basic recipes, literally the possibilities are endless. So we're going to start with a wholemeal dough. Now you might think it's a bit trickier than white, but I'm going to show you it's just as easy and the results are going to be just as good. I'm going to start with 400 grams of Allenson's strong wholemeal bread flour. And to that, I'm going to add 100 grams of the Allenson strong white flour. Now you might have made bread before using all wholemeal flour, but it's got less gluten and gluten is the thing that gives bread the lovely stretch and makes it rise and be lovely and light and airy. So we're just going to add a little bit of the white flour which has more in it to help it on its way. In that goes. I've then got 300 ml of hand warm water. Just check by popping in your finger, it should feel about the same temperature. Now you could use cold, but this is just going to speed up the rising process a bit by going for hand warm. I've got 50 grams of melted butter. Now you put in a little bit more fat than you do with a white dough because wholemeal has a tendency to be a bit drier, so this is just going to keep the bread a bit moister. And some sugar. Again, there's more sugar in this than you'd put in a standard white loaf, and that's because, because of the lack of gluten, the yeast just needs a little bit more feeding to get going. So I've got a whole tablespoon here of a soft brown sugar. I'm using Billington's Light Muscovado because it's got such a lovely flavour. And then simply an Allenson's Easy Bake Yeast Sachet. Now these are already perfectly portioned, so there's no way I'm measuring. Tear that open. And then the last ingredient, I've got a teaspoon and a half of salt just to give the bread some flavour. And again, that's going in with the dry ingredients. Now, give the dry a little bit of a mix. And then we're going in with the wet. Get all that lovely sugar in. give it a good mix about. Now you will have to get your hands in at the end. Bread is all about getting a little bit messy in the kitchen. There we go, that's just about as much as I think I'm going to get away with my spoon. So now it's in with the hands. And I'm just going to bring this together to a smooth dough before I start kneading. So just work the bread into the rest of the ingredients so you can gather up all that dusty flour. Okay, I think that's ready to knead. So clear a space and I'm just going to tip this onto my work surface. Now you'll see that I haven't dusted anything with flour. Again, bread has a tendency to become a bit too dry if you add extra flour, so if you need it on a clean surface, you shouldn't need anything extra to stop it sticking. If you do, just a really, really light dusting, because everything that you put on that surface is going to end up in the bread. Now, the technique I'm using is all about stretching the dough, so you start to stretch the gluten. So I'm pushing away with the heel of my hand, and then bringing it back up into the middle and again pushing away the heel of my hand and bringing it back together. And the technique is as easy or as hard as you want to make it. Literally it's all just about keeping this dough moving and keeping it pulling apart because as I said the more you stretch the more the gluten is going to start to stretch. And that's what's going to rise, help you get all that lovely air going and give you a really light luscious loaf at the end of it. I've been kneading now for about 10 minutes and my dough is lovely and soft, it's really silky and shiny and it's a lot stretchier than it was when we started, so this means it's now ready to prove. I've cleaned out the bowl that I mixed it in and I'm just going to grease it with a little bit of oil, just so the bread doesn't stick because you don't want it to stick and that might stop it rising nicely. I'm going to shake this into a nice ball and 
top him in and I'm going to get him covered with a slightly damp tea towel. Now you could use a piece of cling film, again just lightly grease it so it doesn't stick and then I'm going to leave this now until it's doubled in size. Don't worry about trying to put it somewhere warm like your airing cupboard, literally room temperature is absolutely fine. Just try and keep it out of drafts and we'll come back to that one when it's ready. Now look at that gorgeous dough, it's doubled in size, it's full of air and that is now ready to be shaped and turned into something delicious. So if you go to bakingmad.com, have a look at the Allenson pages and there'll be lots of lovely recipe ideas for what to turn your dough into.